motion into order on behalf of the chair and instructions, and we can, rather than going around on a screen, we can go around the table. Uh, so my name is George Tolumsis, and I'm the planning board rep for this uh, committee. I am the vice chair, and I am designated by the chair to facilitate the meetings. I'm Philip Elmer. I'm the city councilor at large, representative. Lovely, lovely. <laughs> Don't stumble over it. Uh, George, are you are you on the on the agenda? It says, Thank you. Uh, updates related to the master plan. Do you want that or not? Uh, well, yes, I, we want that, right? If anyone has, yeah. Uh, Did I leave introductions off there? No, no, no. You have introductions oh. with updates. Nancy's correct to me. Oh, yeah, yes. screwed up already. Right. Um, yeah. yes. So updates yes. related to the master yes. plan. So I will thank you. I actually have one. Um, <laughs> mine is mine is. I noticed the restriping of the bike lanes on uh, Federal Street, and I mentioned that. That's not news, but I just mentioned it because it's so affirming for the, us in the cyclist community. I moved here in 2002. I looked at Federal Street, <laughs> and I saw this is so friggin' wide. It's crying out for bike lanes, but I knew you can't just go raising a stink and I waited till I you know got involved with the master planning and I got enough momentum going and stuff like that and they were put in and it's like it's so different it makes such a difference this it just paints but it slows cars down and affirms that cyclists belong so I just wanted to it was it warm my heart to see that did you have anything you want to uh, I don't know we may have just ripped a hole in the in the city budget but we <laughs> giving money giving eight hundred thousand dollars to the schools from uh debt relief and uh and paying for health insurance but we'll find out okay so we're giving an update as we go and you 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 can if you if you wish it's optional okay. if there's any updates sure. related to the master sure. plan well, i mean i'm not gonna <laughs> so marla warner dpw director um assigned to the sgic committee liaison i guess um, so I, I had mentioned a couple of projects, people have asked about them. So today was a really cool day. I went up to Wisdom Way. Um, they put the final coat of blacktop on it yesterday. Um, the shared bike path is done. The trees are in. Um, we had to do some substitution with the trees to go through the conservation committee. Basically ended up with everything we were looking for through the plan. Uh, but the outlook halfway up is really cool. The, the concrete pads there, the benches are there, the bike racks are there. To lock your bikes to it if you want. You get up to the top, um, there's a really large kiosk right across from the fair entrance. Oh, nice. Everything's granite curbing, everything's proper crosswalk. Rapid flash of beacons are going into the entrance to the fair. So, excellent. Um, <clears throat> and we're, we're really close to budget, but I think we're going to make it. So, I think the city's not going to have to fund anything. So as an update, I think we put three, four hundred thousand in engineering design, and it's a two point nine million dollar project. Going to be close to three that was funded by uh, Mass DOT and Federal Highway Administration. So I'll give three hundred to get three million every day. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sanderson Street, we're finishing up. Uh, second phase water sewer drain has all been replaced. <clears throat> We're just waiting till mid June to put the final coat of blacktop on the section over near the the uh, tennis courts on, on the east side. West Street is complete. That the final coat of paving went on that last month. We're just waiting for the final bill to close that project out. <clears throat> just quick news: uh, lead uh, lead line service line. That's a big thing come, that's come down from DEP. We have to have a a plan in place for replacement of any lead we may have in our system by October of 24. Uh, we got a $200,000 grant to pay for that. So it's not coming out of our, our water um, retained earnings. So it's, a, it's not a match grant. It's not a cash match. It's 200 grand in our pocket. We've already signed out with Ty and Bond to get going on that. Who'd you get that from? Um, <clears throat> it's actually through DEP, but it's actually the Water Trust, Mass Water Trust, that works with DEP. Hmm. Um, those are the big highlights right now. I mean, I could go on. I'll yield my next five hours to everyone else. Um, <laughs> Can I ask so, you for a report from doing Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can give more next month. I can, I can give more next month. We got a lot going on. We've supported the, the, the skate park project with some planting that Mary and, and Nancy probably know. 
Um, I'll let them talk about I saw freeze. skaters on the skate. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it looks really good. I saw bison. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't do that. So there's a lot more I can talk about the Portland Lou and on and on and on and on. But <laughs> can you give an ETA Thank on that? Do you sure. Um, so <clears throat> I want to, I, I do want to, to tell the story. Greenfield has taken the lead on Portland Lou's. They're, they're made by um, Madden Designs. And other communities have put these in, in in multitudes, and they're not even accepted by the Mass Plumbing Board. So we've taken the lead and talked Madden Designs into going to the Plumbing Board and having these things accepted to accept, have them accepted for acceptable goods with the Mass Plumbing Board. It sounds like they're going to get approved next month. So uh, everything's legal beagle. Matt, you know, Greenfield <laughs> led the way on this, and I, you know, Alan Alan Torog and I persisted that. You know, we're not going to violate, go around the, the building, you know, the, the plumbing code and everything. We're just going to get it done. And we convinced the company and look, you're probably going to get more sales. So mm. that's looking good. It's six to eight weeks for delivery once we sign the contract. That's not bad. But we want to make, for the plum, uh, make sure the plumbing board approves, which it, it looks pretty positive. So rather than it going in in June or July, it's probably going to be like August, September, probably. And you married a quick just follow a quick, question? Yeah, um, you were talking about $200,000 for replacing lead pipes where? We have to do, well, it's a plan. We, oh, okay. have, we have most of the service lines. We have all the records. We know or we don't know where lead is out there. So we have to inventory all the lead service lines, mains, everything that may have lead. Just in municipal buildings or what are you talking about? No, no, oh, throughout the whole okay, city. thank you. 5,300 water services. That doesn't seem like very much money for yeah. the whole thing. Well, it's a plan because well, <laughs> the thing is, is that it's not that much money, but we've had good record keeping over mm -hmm. the years. So awesome. I want to go on a limb and say we don't have a lot of lead out there that's that's a huge effect on anything but we want to remove what we have thank you yeah. thank you so much Mel. yeah, yeah. now we'll put that on the agenda for next month that's awesome <sighs> um i'm hannah <laughs> rec shopping <laughs> chair and member at large um and i have two really quick updates um both kind of coming out of from my work with the Greenfield Business Association. Um, the first one, which is just kind of a fun one, is that the discovery map is coming out for 2023. Um, you might have seen it. It's the sort of cute map that you'll see in all tourist destinations all over the country. Um, it's sort of like cartoons and ads around the, the edge. Um, last year, Greenfield had two businesses represented on there and this year we will have 24 wow. and that just is going to make greenfield on that map look like so much more vibrant um, those will come out on june 12th they'll be handed out to all the participating businesses we'll have about uh three to five hundred of them at green river fest and so hopefully people will get out and see what's around and people from the lower valley will come up and check out greenfield and they'll just see that there's a lot more going on and it's arts and culture stuff, shops, restaurants, services, Their, the participation was, was really robust. What was the second number from when, from two? From to two to 24, yes. Technically, technically for the minutes, <laughs> technically for the minutes, I only signed up 22, the two that participated last year are participating okay. again. So I, I don't yeah. really want to credit for them. Works. They you were already a, on board. You can have a footnote. <laughs> um, <laughs> I noticed that now. And it's very no greenfield. I know. So I know. Really the thing about the map is that it costs money to be a part of, um, and it the Business the investment is, is not insignificant. But if you crowdsource, which means that we have an ad, we actually have three ads for greenfield as opposed to every business having an individual ad, which wouldn't have fit on the mm -hmm. map anyway. Um, I can chop up the costs between each business. So our Greenfield businesses end up paying $68 instead of 574. Nice. Um, but they're still on the map. It's like, you know, they'll go to the Visit Greenfield site. That's what our ad directs people towards and they'll find even more stuff on that website. So it's really just, it's a great way to do it. Um, and then the other really quick update I wanted to give, and I will share this when it's totally finalized, um, but we had a really awesome strategy session um, with the Center on Rural Innovation um, in March, and they are producing a report for us that lays out sort of the assets already in place and then what will need to happen in Greenfield and Franklin County to pursue more presence of a tech industry here. Um, 
and I know those words are scary, I promise it's not as scary as it sounds, it's not like giant companies coming, um, but it's about entrepreneurship, it's about engaging remote workers, it's about really looking at the part of our economy that is um, interacting with the tech industry and how we get people to live in Greenfield, even if they're working elsewhere, and how we engage entrepreneurs and get them to open businesses here. So when I have a final report, I will definitely share it here and we will share it to all stakeholders in Greenfield and Franklin County and see if we can just keep this economy moving in the right direction. Very nice. As timekeeper, I'll just point out we're a little over time for this. <laughs> it's, no, it, it's so <laughs> rich. It's so much stuff. No, no. Hey, so I'll just make myself short. No, 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 I know, I know. Just throwing it out there. Panic. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> Let it flow. <laughs> Uh, Nancy Hazard, a, a member at large, and I, I want to celebrate the, the skate park. I, 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 just amazing, amazing, and the progress in the library is amazing. It's not quite open yet. And, and then I just heard indirectly, because I haven't read the paper today, but in, nationally, the whole tax-taking thing, apparently, the Supreme Court was, gave a positive ruling that nobody in the United States, could, any state could do this anymore. So if you are losing your home because of failure to pay taxes, failure to pay taxes they cannot take your home, sell it, and keep all the proceeds. All right. Yes. Wow. I am on the federal level. All right. Done. <laughs> all right. Thank you, I'm Jonah Keene, member at large. I'll say this in the time. I have nothing to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, Anna Olson. I'm the Community uh, Development Administrator. Uh, no updates for me. Thank you. I'm Jesse Dean. I'm the Executive Director of the Franklin County Chamber of Commerce and Regional Tourism Council. And I have a lot to say. <laughs> you have a lot of time. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Carol Collins, Director of Energy and Sustainability. I um, I mean, there's so much, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I just got project information details on both 60 Well Street, the project, and the Wilson's apartments, and I am so impressed okay. with Great. what they're doing. Wilson's is going for passive house certification, mm -hmm. which is very impressive, and uh, I didn't even have to ask. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Um, or fight, as the <laughs> term may be, or be Sisyphus. So, uh, very exciting. I'm, I'm providing support letters for them for grants and just really exciting to see projects taking the lead and incorporating things that should be done. So I'll, and there's more coming, but we'll next month. I'm Mary Chicklin. I am also an at-large member and I am reporting back on something from the last meeting, which is that uh, a community can have any sort of open space committee that they want, any sort. So it doesn't take a um, doesn't take going through the charter. Um, so, for instance, in Sunderland, they had a little teeny open space committee of three residents, and when I was at Fercog, I helped them get an open space plan through DCR. So. I don't even really recall why we were talking about that, but I wanted to come back with that information. <laughs> Thank you. It's one of the top priorities. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, because they were going to have plan an ordinance. Know if that had so an ordinance doesn't yeah. need to be passed. Correct. Wow. Who does it's the city council, I assume, has to bless it or something? No. Not even. Wow. So a bunch of people can just start meeting and call them. <laughs> yes. Now, of course, there can be lots of opposition and that can cause a lot of problems. Right. Or just if they make recommendations, if they'll be recognized. And it does, they don't need Thanks. to be appointed yeah. by the mayor. Yeah. Thank you for following up, Mary. I was going to suggest we could make that an agenda. Yes, that is awesome. Discussion. Thank you. And I think the reason we were talking about it is because it was one of the items in the master plan and we weren't sure if it had happened. So this yep. is, that's great. Yeah. And Greta, you're still there. I haven't forgotten you. Hello, I'm here. <laughs> hey there. We saw you. Oh. Can you see me and hear me? Yeah. Well, I was hoping you'd be outside somewhere nice. <laughs> but there's I was a plan. Hoping that I would be. That was the goal for this. But no, I'm still <laughs> um, we got our food truck, which is very exciting. Uh, Woohoo! So that will be on the road shortly. We're working on getting all of our inspections and 
um, booking some PTO events and field days and kind of our big unveiling will be at our summer eats kickoff, which is going to take place on the 22nd at the swim area uh, for kids and families across the city. So I will be putting out more information about that shortly. Uh, yeah, it's big summer eats season. Lots of fun. That's Good. awesome. Thank you, brother. And congratulations. <laughs> Just to mention that uh, as we have further discussions today, if I don't happen to swing around and see you, feel free to speak up if you want to okay, say something. Thank you. Thanks. I'll be here. Okay. Uh, next is approval of the April meeting minutes. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Very good. Discussion? As usual, have some. Uh, I appreciated, Phil, the uh, promotion you gave me to co chair when I'm actually the vice chair. Uh, and uh, I, I also wanted to uh, suggest that, in the just for clarity, that in the uh, when we list people who are present, we list the committee members separate from staff who might be present, just so it's clear for anybody. Uh, Eric, uh, near the bottom of the first page, Eric's first name. Ironically, this is spelled uh, it's e, e R I K. Built um, that uh, middle of the second page. It says uh, a comment from me, not mandated that it uh, has to be updated in ten years ago. I uh, just wanted to, uh, that the master plan doesn't need to be updated every ten years. It was a question, um, and. There was a comment, uh, just a typo about uh, the spelling mayors. And then at the end of the um, uh, middle section here is a statement. Mary adds suggestion that street trees. All right, dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know what that was. Um, I didn't hear it, apparently. Okay. And at the end, it says Unet. Included in the open. I didn't go back to listen to the. In the. Uh, okay. Okay. Oh, what's it? What's it called? I'm sorry. Oh, Open space. We're doing priority mapping. Uh, it was around the conservation, conservation corridor, right? So it was about that. So, but it was more than that. It's that other thing that we've been talking about forever. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, my brain. Can, nope. it, can we have Phil go back and, and look at the sure. video, you, maybe? If you give me that. Sure. And and uh, <laughs> lastly, and I'll, I'll call myself. This is a lot of work because this isn't questioning the content of the minutes. It's just there was something about uh, maybe we should approve the minutes first and then I'll raise this. So, um, with those, is there any objection to those edits? It says Marlo's there and yeah, he wasn't. Yeah, I, yeah I, was, I was there back in March. There was a whole one. I didn't, oh, I didn't believe that Can last you drop month. That no. yeah. Sure. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. And actually, I could use the file. I could, actually, I can do it on the file and send it back to you. Oh, the recording. Yeah, yeah. I Anna has it, so we will have to get it from Anna. Yeah. The uh, recording? Mm -hmm. No, not the recording. I've got the recording. Uh, it's the, the actual text that I went, once I send it to you, I figure it's gone. Oh, you send it to me, and you <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. But now that I actually have the changes in front of me, I can put. I'm sorry. Okay. You're I like that style. I hold on to everything. It feels like done with that. <laughs> You're ready. <in. laughs> I know. <laughs> I keep too many files. I just learned. <laughs> So thanks for catching that Marlo was yeah. uh, not there. Any other comments on the um Do you want on the to complete streets? I mean I, I think Nancy's right that the dot 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 referred to uh, complete streets. Ah, okay, I'll put that in there for you, Bill. And um so uh we have a mo motion in a second. All in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. Aye. And we opposed or abstain? I abstain. abstain. Two abstentions. Thank you. Um, and I did want to just, there was one time sensitive thing. Uh, this is related to a state housing grant. This is something, Anna had, and uh, asked if we would sign a letter of support. Yeah, I know. I was that. Looking for brainstorm due date June 2nd. And uh, we said there was, uh, Carol made a motion we signed the letter. And, uh, and there was general agreement. So, Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened with that. I have not heard about it yet. I think it is coming our way still to. Yeah. What is the process for getting a signature on a letter of support from a committee? Like, does everybody? I think it'd be the chair yes. on yeah. behalf of the committee. Yeah. Yeah. I could look, but I think that's what we've done in the past. Yes. That, that's the only case. And this indicated that there was committee support for it. Yeah. So. yeah. Okay. 
Cool. Thank you. ASAP. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> awesome. And next, we have our guest speaker. Yay. Welcome. So excited, finally. And uh, we have 20 minutes set aside for presentation and 20 minutes for questions. So. Yeah. Great. I hope not to take all of that time. I don't normally dress up so fancy, but I usually really take off coaches at your old girls' softball game. So, yes. um, thank you very much for allowing me to listen in and to meet all of you and um, to thank you in person for all the work that you're doing. Greenfield, of course, is the city of Franklin County, and um, we're very proud um, to have Greenfield in Franklin County and for all of the work that you're doing. So I am newer to the Chamber of Commerce. I started, well, I can't say that as much. You can't it's say that anymore. It's been almost a year, and I'm right at that point now where it feels like I've been there forever. <laughs> I also still feel very new in some ways. Um, but is there anyone here who is not at all familiar with the Chamber of Commerce? Is this Greenfield? This is all of Franklin County. Are you in Deerfield now? Uh, yes. Technically, yes. Okay. The one that used to be on Main Street. Yes. So I just left a condo association. So please remember, we still own that building. <laughs> we are still very much in downtown Greenfield, but we are currently leasing the space to community action. So I'm generally familiar with, but I would appreciate that, that general great. orientation. Okay, great. So I uh, represent the Franklin County Chamber of Commerce. And we are also Franklin County's Regional Tourism Council. Those are two separate organizations that do very separate work. that are both full-time jobs. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to you about both of those today. I'll start with the Franklin County Chamber of Commerce. We all wonder oh, how she's talking. Wasn't there the tourism up at the RMV? Or am I so that, No, no, you're right. So that was a visitor center. Okay. Which is a very, very small subset of the Regional Tourism Council. Okay. So I'll start first with the Chamber of Commerce. So most of us are familiar with how Chamber of Commerce is operates. Everyone is a little different. So we represent all 26 communities in Franklin County. That's a very large geographic footprint. So for us, I think the task is really being the regional voice for legislative advocacy, for business networking, for connection building, and for um, making sure that there are cohesive priorities across Franklin County in terms of some of the work that Hannah was mentioning, right, the Corey. So the Franklin County Chamber of Commerce helped um, fund that, mm -hmm. that process. So thinking regionally about what this area needs and how we can best position ourselves and our businesses um, to move economic development forward across the region. We also do some really great events. I'm sure most of you are familiar with our breakfast that we have every month last Last week, was it last week? Yes. yes. We had a lunch, lunch. Um, <laughs> at our field golf course, which was a lemonade lunch where we talked about how different Franklin County businesses and nonprofits have done a really great job of making lemonade out of lemons over the past few years. And of course, we had lemonade, bash catering, catered it. It was lovely. It was so nice. Um, our next breakfast is on June 16th at 7.30 at Eagle Brook School. That is our legislative breakfast. So that is a really great opportunity to hear updates from legislators across Western Mass and also for them to see that we are an engaged and vibrant business community. So if you're available, please register and join us. Open to the public? Of course. Okay. Oh. So the, but you have to register. You do have to register. Um, you're also welcome to show up at the door. Yes, payment is helpful. Um, so there's that's a really good point. So I um, came into this role last summer, and I was on the board of the chamber before then. My, my experience is with Community Action Pioneer Valley. I know Nancy's familiar with Community Action's work, but Community Action Pioneer Valley is an anti property agency that serves Franklin, Hampshire, and Western Hampton County. So it's also a very large regional footprint. They're one of the main employers here in Franklin County. They do really incredible work, and I was the director of communications and development for them. Um, personally, I have two businesses. I own two gyms, one in Hadley and one in West Springfield. I will just do it. We wanted to open in Greenfield and we couldn't find a space at the time, so don't hold it against me. Um, but my work in different communities across Western Mass has really shown me, um, you know, how interesting different counties are business-wise. And also I've had the opportunity to work with different chambers of commerce up and down the valley. And there's, um, you know, there's really value and effect of chamber of commerce. And I've Amherst is one. I was an Amherst Chamber Ambassador for a number of years, um, and I've really enjoyed the work and the connection building that can happen with the Chamber and the way that they can support small businesses and nonprofits. 
Um, so with that, I loved being on the Franklin County Chamber of Commerce Board, um, and I was thrilled when the opportunity came up to apply for this job. So the Franklin County Chamber of Commerce has been in creation since, uh, uh, well, it's 104 years now. Um, and I realized very quickly that in some ways, some of the processes and systems had not been updated <laughs> in that time. Um, so there is a lot of um, kind of modernizing that's been happening in the last few months at the chamber. And, you know, getting a better sense of where the value is and where uh, businesses need the value to be. Because we work not just for the businesses that are members of the chamber. I think the, the uh, more traditional chamber model is kind of a pay to play type format. And I, I, don't, I don't believe in that. I think that if we are the Chamber of Commerce and we are asked to be the voice of the, re the region, that we need to do our due diligence in making sure that everyone's represented. And of course, we hope that businesses will see the value and invest and support local. Um, but I think we need to make sure that all voices are heard and that everyone's at the, comp at the table because we ultimately want to make sure that if someone decides to start a business here or if they're in the business of um, social services or nonprofits, we're doing everything we can to help them. So one of the, the first changes that I made to your point was the chamber was operating kind of in an insular way. So the newsletter only went to members, events were open to the public, but because there was no kind of outward communication, no one really knew about them. So we've been doing some work to make sure that um, the chamber is much more upfront about our marketing and that the work of the chamber, because don't get me wrong, the chamber has been doing incredible work for the last 104 years, but that we're doing a better job of marketing that work and communicating to um, audiences outside just our direct membership. So that's one of one of the, the um, updates we've made. So please, I encourage you all to subscribe to our newsletter. It's a really great way to stay informed about what's happening across Franklin County. And of course, Greenfield makes our newsletter almost every month, um, <laughs> if not every month. Um, the other. The other um, priority, I think, for me over the past year has really been making sure that all of the different municipalities have been, and, and different leadership across the county are talking to each other. I think, you know, as a business owner, I understand that during the pandemic, we all kind of put our heads down and just tried to get through it. But now there is an opportunity for um, cross-county communication and collaboration in a way that I think um, maybe folks just didn't have the capacity to be as open to during the height of the pandemic. And so Greenfield's doing some great work. Shelburne Falls is doing some great work. Deerfield's doing some great work, making sure that we can all learn from each other and think regionally about how we can best um, advocate for Western Mass as an area. Um, because of obviously a collective voice is much stronger, particularly for this administration. I'm very thrilled at um, the new Office of Rural Affairs which Ian Gobi is taking. Um, and I've been thrilled with what we've seen from this administration in terms of investing in the Western side of the state. Um, because if you're paying attention to population projections, they're not great. We have a lot, they're not great for the next- Meaning? Yeah, so the, we're on track to decline significantly in population for Franklin County between now and 2050. Now keep in mind that these population projections are put together by NASDAQ and they are skewed for more urban areas, so they don't include some really important key points that um, would bolster our projections significantly. But overall, the projections, and again, these are just projections, but they're not fantastic. It shows a lot of movement and a lot of upward trajectory in, the, in Boston and the islands and, and not as much on the western side of the state. I disagree with them, for one. I'm happy to go into why. Um, we can take some bets. Yeah, but I think what's, what's important is that this creates an opportunity for us to really leverage that and mm -hmm. really have a more uh, collective voice regionally about why investment in the western side of the state is incredibly important. Mm -hmm. So we're working with our legislature and with the FERCOG and with some regional voices like GCC to make sure I just had a really great um, meeting this morning with Karen from Post Development to make sure that there is um, some equity in funding across the Commonwealth, right? Because that's what it is, the Commonwealth. So um, there's a lot of forward motion on the Chamber side. I am thrilled to work with Hannah at the GBA. 
I very much subscribe to the model that we are stronger together. We are the Franklin County Chamber of Commerce. We cannot be all things to all communities. And I love the idea of having a micro and a macro regional uh, voice and making sure that, that GBA and that there's some different com community groups building in Shelburne Falls and, and Northfield that we're all at the table talking about what's best for our main streets and our downtowns and we're sharing resources because Franklin County is rich with supportive comprehensive services for entrepreneurs and for small businesses and we just want to make sure that everybody knows about them. So that's the work on the chamber side of the house. Um, any questions about that piece? Yes. Um, where do we stand with uh, rail from Boston out to here? So that's a great question. So I just attended the hearing, when was it, in March? They had in Northampton at the Senior Center. And that hearing um, was basically a hearing to hear if they should recommend that there be a study done. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I will say that Natalie Blay is on, Representative Natalie Blay is on that committee, as is Linda Dunley being from the FERCOG, and that we are well represented there. I think um, there is certainly momentum building. I know it was, she seems to have um, not talked about it recently, but I know that it was a major priority uh, for Governor Healy. So I think we are forward moving on that. There's an mm -hmm. update next week that I'm scheduled to attend, mm -hmm. so I can certainly report back once Same. I hear that. Yeah. When, when I, I work with people with substance abuse issues, that sounds like pre contemplation. Really? <laughs> like, <laughs> that, you know, that's the thing, right? So, favorite to be in. <laughs> no, a lot of times, well, you know. The things that would be the most helpful are very labyrinth-like. Mm -hmm. There is a labyrinth-like process to all of it. Mm -hmm. um, but as you know, housing, healthcare, accessible, <laughs> accessible transportation, those are rural mm -hmm. issues. So I'm, I'm hopeful that as this new director of rural affairs comes into play, um, that we'll have a strong <laughs> voice in making sure that those concerns are heard because mm -hmm. there is there are some real, you know, real rural issues rising to the top of the priority list right now. So we want to make sure that we can get all of the funding we possibly can for those. I will say too, um, <laughs> I think the rail is something that comes up a lot when we talk about how remote workers and industries where people are needing to go back and forth to urban centers, when those um, groups are louder and get louder, um, things like rail move along a little more quickly. So that is one of the things in this uh, economy report and then some other conversations that are happening about trying to engage folks who are living here and working in Boston especially and trying to get them to understand that we could really use their advocacy, but it's hard to find folks who work remotely because they're not really engaging. So that's been a conversation um, that I've had with Green Space Cowork a lot um, and some other folks about how do we connect with people who are working remotely here, reach out to them and try and get them to raise their voices for how that would improve their quality of life and work life. So if anyone knows remote workers. Well, and I didn't attend the Springfield based hearing, but the mm -hmm. Northampton hearing was packed. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think I sat there for two and a half hours and there was a good um, population Pelham was mm -hmm. there in droves, mm -hmm. uh, but there was also a number of remote workers. But, you know, what kept coming up was, I, I want to live in Western Mass, but I want to continue to work in Boston. Yeah. And the point that I brought is that I want people who live in Boston to come to Western Mass, um, which is a really great segue to the next piece that I'd like to talk about, which is the Regional Tourism Council. So, yes. I did have a question before you sure. move on. So I was thinking about <clears throat> what you said about kind of instead of the chamber being, you didn't say elite, but you know, it was select people, right? And that you're trying to Data bring point. in more mm -hmm. businesses and trying to be more inclusive. That's, I think that's what I heard you say. So <laughs> not quite. So before the chamber was very um, member focused mm -hmm. as we should be and by no means do I want to miscommunicate that we are not, we are not advocating on behalf of our members. Okay. Um, but before, I just wanted to be known that you don't have to be a member to have a conversation with the chamber. Okay. If there is a way that I can help the business, I'm going to help them. Okay. Um, and then, you know, of course, I hope they see the value. Um, 
The membership at this point is around 400. Mm -hmm. There's no reason we shouldn't double that in the next two years. Mm -hmm. um, because collectively, we're a stronger network when we grow, right? I want as many voices at the table as we can. Um, so that's all I want to say. I think sometimes um, there is this idea with the Chamber of Commerce that in order to engage at all, you have to be a member first. And that is not how we operate. OK, so I have a, a question. Sure. Thank you for correcting me on what I thought I heard you say. I'm curious if you've been working at all with the CDC at all in Franklin County to connect to some of those micro businesses, those folks just starting out, maybe people of color, things like that. Yeah, so we work uh, with the Franklin County CDC. We work with Common Capital, and we also work with Mass Development to make sure that um, and we're actually working with the CDC to put out a welcome letter to anybody that moves to Franklin County to say, here's what's happening. and putting out a separate web welcoming letter to anybody that institutes an LLC um, to make sure that those small businesses understand the resources that are available. Um, so we did have a breakfast in April uh, that was how to boost your bottom line. And the guest speakers were John Waite and Tracy Talbot, who's the racial justice uh, community leader with CDC. Um, and with Raymond uh, Lindsay Wild from Common Capital and with Mass Hire and Mass Good. Development okay. to make sure that everybody who is interested in entrepreneurs has all of the information because entrepreneurial life, I mean, we all know it's not for everyone. Um, and so if we can help have those kind of discovery conversations right off the bat, we want to be able to do that. Um, so by no means is the priority of the chamber, you have to be a certain size before you right. can Brick and mortar or whatever. The other piece of the chamber is that we historically have not been as proactive in attracting and recruiting different kinds of businesses. And we're looking to shift that model. Granted, housing is a restriction. I mean, we, we want people to move here, but that's tough when there's no housing yeah. available. So we're also working with municipalities and with different legislatures to make sure that um, housing continues to grow in Western Mass and that we are focusing some of those um, larger developments out here um, because that's, an, it's, that's another important piece to that. I just wanted to ask, um, you mentioned, alluded to the FERCOG and your uh, collaboration with them. Interested in hearing if there's any highlights about that. And the other organization I was wondering about this may add another segue to the tourism is about the FRTA. I'm very involved with them and I wondered if you guys are connected much. So let me start with the FERCOG. FERCOG, we are so lucky to have them here. Right. I just, I was just telling you, know, <laughs> Jessica Atwood probably regrets the day she gave me her cell phone number because uh, she is rock star status in my mind. And same with Linda, Linda's on her board. Um, you know, they are just such a wealth of knowledge and doing such great work to move different um, community-based projects forward. So we work very collaboratively with them. We're have, I have a meeting there tomorrow at 9.30. Um, we are very much um, at the table. I should also mention that as the chamber, I serve on more than 17 community-based committees. Good Lord. And soccer? And softball. I'm so kidding. I'm terrible. I'm so kidding. I'm so kidding. I'm so kidding. I'm so but yeah, so I'm on the OPO task force. I'm on this Freddie group that's community, Franklin County community leaders. I'm the um, economic development plan for Franklin County and for regionally. Um, I'm on the, the TIPS, the transportation planning committee. There's a lot of different community um, based work that's happening. And I'm, I am constantly asking to your point, who's not represented here? Mm -hmm. um, and. To be, to be truthful, the answer right now is a lot of people. And so that's something that I think regionally we're becoming more aware of. Um, and it's not just in Franklin County. What One thing that I am really proud to see is that we are expanding our collaborations across Western Mass. So I just attended this really interesting entrepreneurial accelerated program in East Hampton that the city of East Hampton is doing because of course I would love to learn from their success. They got this grant to hire this firm from Chattanooga, and they're doing some really incredible work. And to their credit, they invited different community members and different chamber, you know, to come and learn and be part of the discussion to say, what do we need as a region? So that I'm, I'm very encouraged by that openness to collaboration that I'm seeing um, across the region. 
And if I may, yes, just to clarify, when you talk about representing everyone, it's really through the business lens, right? You're so, so yes and no. So we have to keep in mind that we are two separate organizations. So we are the regional tourism All right, then the and tourism. the chamber. So yes, businesses and nonprofits, but ultimately businesses are not going to thrive here unless the communities right, are thriving. Right. Um, so I don't, I can't use the app that I only represent businesses. Right, right. I mean, it's, it really is a comprehensive lens that we have to be thinking these things through. Um, otherwise we're dooming certain businesses and certain industries to, to fail. I am in full support of the Corey Innovation Technology because I think that is um, that is a, a way we can move forward quickly and we become very attractive to certain uh, technology industries without needing to expand these <coughs> industrial parks in Franklin County at this point. I know it's a hot topic. Uh, it looks like we're going to stay with six for the time being. So we have to think creatively about what kind of industries can we attract. And FRTA? FRTA, I will tell you, we don't have, I, I really lean on the FERCOG to be the, the primary point of contact with FRTA. I know that I would I would love to see FRTA uh, open during uh, more evening hours, mm -hmm. um, but I, I wouldn't say that we have a, I think we have a strong communication base at this point. Because there are, um, there, there are some innovations in the last couple of years. One is the access program, I don't know if you're familiar with, which is the first time there's there's some weekend uh, transportation. And there's also a uh, process around workforce, yep. training for second and third shift. Um, so I didn't know if you were connected with those things. Megan Rhodes uh, is on the committee I'm on at the FRTA. And Megan Rhodes is great. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the updates that I get I, are channeled through the FERCOP, right through the annual report, which I read, and, and those kinds of updates. Thanks. Can I just, yes. I, I chuckled before with the East-West Rail and I'll just, if I may, I started working in the planning field at PVPC in uh, 2000 and East-West Rail has always been the top priority. So I just laugh, I know. And, you know, I, I do think it would be, it would be a total game changer, mm -hmm. but I think it would also foster a lot more unaffordable housing out here, mm -hmm. but whatever, I, I would love to see it happen. What was the other thing? Oh, the transportation, that's the other thing. You know, Sorry, George, it's, mm -hmm. just, it's always been like the tough nut to crack. Yeah. Right, there's a lot of considerations, particularly when we talk about creating infrastructure of that kind. And, um, you know, I kind of, I don't, I won't pretend to know what the answer is and how we should do it and how it should be funded and whether it should be Amtrak or however else. But um, I do believe that we are going to be a stronger Commonwealth if we can um, knit our communities together and make transportation more accessible. <laughs> yeah. But you're right. I, I don't think that's going to be done <laughs> next year. <laughs> <laughs> but we are seeing some forward movement, which is great. Um, so the Regional Tourism Council, we are one of 16 RTCs in the state funded by the Massachusetts Office of Tourism and Travel. So we are tasked with promoting tourism to Franklin County. Uh, we, we represent all of Franklin County, and that is the Chamber's role. We are funded, grant funded to do so. Um, to give you some context, Hampshire County is um, managed by the Northampton Chamber, but that includes all of Hampshire County. And then the Springfield Convention and Visitors Bureau manages um, uh, Hampton County. And then one Berkshire manages Berkshire County. So those are the five regional RTCs. No, I only counted four. Uh, is there uh, orange? No, 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 uh, there's four. No, Hampshire County, Franklin County, One Berkshire, Springfield. Camden. Yeah, yeah. that's four. You're right. Um, <laughs> it's been a good one. Uh, there are 16 across the state, um, but we are funded through Vermont, as I said. Uh, for any of you that have applied for state funding, you know how exciting that process is. <laughs> and uh, RTC funding is no different. I am now, I'm coming at the end of my first year, but I, I got to submit the final report um, for FY22 and then write the grant for FY23. So that was an interesting kind of time to come in. Um, but if you're thinking, I've never seen any Franklin County tourism marketing 
you're probably right. And that is because we have to market at least 50 miles outside of the area. Oh. So I cannot do any marketing within 50 miles. I'm working with Senator Paul Mark to, to see if there can be an asterisk of that to see if we can um, market more locally if it's across state lines because I think we're much more likely to get mm. visitors from southern Vermont and southern New Hampshire than we are from Boston. But did you say 15 or 50? 50. Outside the borders of the the region? The outside, 50 miles outside the borders of the region. Wow. Correct. It's a long way. It is a long it's way. It's ridiculous. And for Franklin County, which is primarily a day trip yep. destination, mm -hmm. that's a challenge for us. So our top three markets are Boston, New York City, and uh, Southern Connecticut at this point. So there is, you know, the, the tourism as an industry hasn't evolved um, very quickly. And so, you know, there's a there's a couple of bills on the House floor right now that we're looking to see if we can update this tourism trust fund and the way the funding is administered. But there's also some really low hanging fruit that we're talking about with Senator Paul Mark and Representative Minnie Dom about um, how we can better advocate for um, more rural RTCs because we have a much we have a much different scope of, of marketing than say Boston or Nantucket. They're doing okay. I don't I don't know. Right, right, right. I'm not shocking you <laughs> to anybody here, but you know it's funny. We are um, when I get all of the data from the state on tourism. There's a, a spreadsheet and you know it's all of these big impressive numbers and then it gets to Franklin County and it's blank. And that's because we don't have any hotels that are big enough to subscribe to the data and software systems that the rest of the, the state uses. Um, and so it's tough to make the case when I'm like, just trust me, we've had people. <laughs> people are coming, I promise. Um, but we've done a pretty great job of that. So this year, we received the largest grant from Ma that we've ever received in the history of the chamber. And I am confident that we will um, we will grow that for FY24. Um, a lot of that groundwork was laid last uh, spring when they worked with transit authority figures to brand Franklin County. I always want to say rebrand, but there was no grant to be given. So it was, it was <laughs> what about West Mouse? That was <laughs> <laughs> you're <laughs> troubling. <laughs> so, <laughs> that was a great case study. Um, how that how that process should go. Um, Does everybody know what that's a reference? I know. Yeah. So they still are. They still it's are. Tell me later. That, yeah. tell you. that brand is still Western Mass. That's the Springfield Visitors Convention. Yeah. They're still Western Mass, and we just did a. Um, multi RTC grants with them. We got $1 million from the state, the four RTCs, uh, for some uh, shoulder season funding. And it, we confused almost every firm we work with because they call themselves Western Mass. So they thought there was already this like Western Mass brand in place when really it was just Springfield. <laughs> um, but the Franklin County grant is great. And I'm mm -hmm. How much was it for? Uh, I don't have the numbers right. It, the grant we got this year was for three hundred and ten thousand. Um, his the grant they got last year, don't quote me on this, was was two thirty. Um, so it was it was significantly more, which is great because as as most grants go, we're all fighting over one pot of money, and there's not a lot of money that gets dedicated to the RTCs. We're we're working with with Colin and Andy to to grow that fund, but. Um, it is a competitive process, but thankfully Franklin County has been much more competitive. Um, we are in the process of building a standalone tourism website. It is live. We have not done a hard launch, but you can visit more to Franklin County dot com. What is um, it? More to Franklin County. More to Franklin County. More to Franklin County. Yeah. Yep. So the, the concept being with the brand that there's always more to explore in Franklin County. Huh. So um, there's also an awesome Instagram page that's the same name and it really makes you proud to live here. It's just the cutest, like, little hidden gems. So that, that, and that's exactly how it's described, is a hidden gem. So please follow us on social, both the Chamber and Mortar Franklin County. There's a, there's a lot going on there. There you go. So yeah. you can see how we do the more craft to crave. We're really pulling on the more piece of it. Um, but one of our uh, priorities is to do some itinerary building with Franklin County. 
we have so much to offer, but like any, any, you know, action based item, we want to make sure it's really easy for people to get here. And so we're working with a travel blogger to make sure that we have some itineraries built in and that people can go through our website and do some discounts. Um, but we have worked in the last few months with Yankee Magazine, we have a number of promotions that we've done for them. Um, that highlight Franklin County, I don't know if anybody saw the one about covered bridges. Mm. I can send some around. Um, we just, it just arrived today on May 11th. We had a full page advertorial in the Wall Street Journal um, because New York City is one of our, our markets. Um, we have put significant funding behind advertising for the Green River Festival. So we're working with Jim um, to do that. We, of course, um, put some money behind Cider Days, um, but we're really trying to make sure that if there are events that are happening and there's a region for people to come visit here, then we are doing our due diligence and making sure that's communicated to outside markets. Yes. Uh, I, I didn't even know about it, but I rode by a music festival today and then rode. Today? Today. It's at that camp. Uh, camp Street. Yeah, it's huge. Uh, and I counted 100 tents. Oh, no, it's like Wormtown, okay. but it's got a different name. And it wasn't, but it clearly it had been uh, marketed on the radio stations that reached Strange Massachusetts and Northern Strange. Connecticut. Yes. It was all mass in Northern Connecticut. Not my kind of thing. And, you know, I saw a lot of tents and a lot of people and no water. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to do it. <laughs> And they're stuck there. You know, yeah. What was it called? Oh, no, and they're Strange all high with cotton mouth. <laughs> Strange Creek. I think it's put yeah. on by the same folks who do worm mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'll have to check that out. Um, and Treehouse Brewery is putting Franklin County like oh on the map. Yeah. So, uh oh. So they are. Yes, of course. Um, nope, they are. I am a, a um, big proponent that Franklin County and Western Mass beer scene was alive and well before Treehouse arrived. But yes, yeah. but we Darn are. Right. We are certainly seeing an uptick. Getting the biggest acts we're getting in the valley. So mm -hmm. yes. Trombone Shorty's coming. <gasps> Yeah, right so, in sex in case. So to keep in mind some of our major attractions are Treehouse, Fur Trees, Yankee Candle, mm. Magic Wings. Mm. Um, we have Shelter Falls, Bridge of Flowers. Yep. So, um, mm. We have so much great outdoor rec. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a lot of tie between folks who are looking to uh, pair outdoor Rec and outdoor adventure with craft beer, and we are the place to do that. So mm -hmm. that tends to be, um, we tend to lead a lot on our outdoor rec scene, our arts and culture scene, and then, of course, um, good food, our craft beer, mm -hmm. and, and farm to table cuisine. Mm. Yes. See, you are a pro farm to table cuisine. <laughs> <laughs> I say good food. <laughs> <They're not wrong>. <laughs> <laughs> So there's a lot happening. We um, typically do a guidebook. Guidebooks, in my experience, are outdated the second you publish them. Mm. So we're rethinking that a little because, of course, we're funded based on our metrics for our traffic to our website because that's really the one standalone data point we can bring to our RTC grant process. So we are doing what we're calling a beauty book, which is like a like a guidebook, but if you've ever scrolled someone's Instagram feed and it's just beautiful photos that kind of give you the vibe of a place, that's really what we're focusing on with this book. So it's not going to be a laundry list of businesses with, you know, phone numbers and websites that you don't even know what it is. It's really going to be heavy on beautiful photography with QR codes to redirect people back to the website so that they can um, just very simply build their trip. So that's kind of a new approach to a guidebook that I've not seen done yet. Um, I'm hoping that it, we're, we're pioneers in that and that it works out really well. Because you'll know next year if we go back to a standard guidebook. <laughs> and look, it was just a bad idea. Um, but the point is that it can be very evergreen. And of course, we're working collaboratively with all of our more um, um, hospitality industry folks to make sure that um, we're in the know of what, you know, patterns they're seeing and that they know what we're up to and that we can get these day trippers to extend their say because ultimately tourism is about other people's money and we want to make sure that we are doing our best to spend it for them while they're here. <laughs> <laughs> um, does anybody have any other questions? I, I guess my question before I, uh, before I go is how, how can the chamber help? Mm -hmm. 
How can we help you? As people are thinking about that, I do have a specific question. I obviously tend to look through a certain lens of things and um, I've Can I guess what one, it is? One, one of the reasons <laughs> I moved to Greenfield was because of the cycling yep. uh, in the area. Um, you got flat areas and you got wonderful hill climbing and stuff. And it's some of the most quiet paved roads in the area. And I'm, I'm a, a cycle on paved roads mostly. Uh, but it's also got some amazing dirt roads. And, and um, I've heard people who are better traveled than me say it's some of the best cycling in the country. And so I, part of the master plan, which I have here, is uh, about encouraging uh, cycling tourism to the area. Yeah. We have the uh, D2R2, I don't know if people are familiar with that, mm -hmm. the Deerfield Dirt Road Brandon A. Brandon A is a, a untimed cycling event and uh, that gets a lot of, I mean, people come from wide, wide range of places to participate in that. So I'm just wondering mm -hmm. how that factors in if you do, if you target cyclists through whatever we do so we do, to your point there's another initiative that i didn't mention and that's western mass outdoors and that's a collaborative that we do with hampshire county rtc um, and there's a whole standalone website um, but primarily how we we market to, to um, focus interest groups is through blogs so we'll do a beautiful picture with some short blog that we'll do through yankee magazine that will encourage people to come um, but you're right do you know chris sellers was name? Chris Sellers. He used to be the head of Group in Spine, and he now owns uh, the brewery at Forest Dog Farm with the Latois. But, but I know I know Alden, you know, really well in Alden. Was, he's a cyclist. Um, and one of my goals for the next, I'm gonna say five years, is to have a very comprehensive map for Franklin County Breweries, which I've already talked to Masters Brews Association of all of the ways their pilot like your past went, went wrong. Um, <laughs> so it seems like no one's quite figured that that out yet. Um, but also the number of folks who are here to do kind of a like pedals to pint type um, uh, guided tour. And so those are, those are two um, projects that we're currently working on. And the other thing in the probably is in the mix there, but the uh, Franklin County Bikeway is just mm -hmm. amazing mm -hmm. what FERCOG has done to develop that and develop those maps. And that includes on-road, off-road, some dirt, dirt some trails, it's great. And they also, during the pandemic, went through and um, I, this is so much work and I'm so appreciative to them, but they were kind of like, well, what else are we have to do during the pandemic? But they went through to all of the um, state parks and all of the outdoor hiking trails and took pictures and mapped wow. what was available there. And all of that data is just sitting there. So we're working right now to integrate that into our website um, so that when you come to our website, it's all mapped out. And I should also say that, of course, included on our website, we are um, connecting directly to the Visit Greenfield page. Nice. Thank you. So, oh, okay. 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 you would frame the question, how can the, uh, the, the Chamber of the Tourism Board Help the work we're doing. It sounds like you were you were yes. asking about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought you had an answer. After no, no, no. I guess I was reframing the question because I, mm -hmm. I asked a more specific one. But you had something. Yeah. Oh, I just was think when you say pedals to pint, you need to talk to Garth Garth Shanifelt if you haven't already. Yeah. <laughs> He's your guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I I I should go without saying, but I I was born and raised in Bernstein. Um, so was my husband. I lived here my whole life. I left for college and then like many folks came back. I'm a Franklin County super fan. There is nowhere I would rather live. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we have so much to offer. And so I think our task as the chamber and the RTC, first and foremost, is to um, communicate that to other folks. And I am encouraged when I go to the business breakdowns um, and when we're having these regional conversations, how many people are saying that they moved to Greenfield and they're so glad they did. Mm -hmm. I can think of three business owners right off the top of my head who, who moved here specifically to open a business and why they chose Greenfield and why they're so glad they did. And so our work is just to communicate that. I think there's a lot of possibility again and I talked about and I had that conversation today of marketing that more locally mm -hmm. to Hampton County. We have so much to offer residents and startup businesses in this area. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to make sure that we're telling that story to Hampton County, to Hampshire County, and to Southern Vermont. Mm -hmm. 
So Hannah, I just I noticed we're at um, about six o'clock, and I know we're ending early to be able to adjourn to. I to, was suggesting. Yes. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, that was the plan. So I didn't know if, um, uh, with that in mind, we want to. Mm -hmm. I don't know if people had immediate answers. Yeah. To Jesse's question, else? or I have one little thing that I would say, um, and I know. I mean, you and I get to talk a lot, but just in listening and kind of thinking, I think one of the things that this committee is always really concerned with is how our master plan moves into execution. And I think one of the things that comes up a lot is I feel like there's a lot of data, a lot of plans, a lot of, you know, in sort of different courts. And so I see the chamber as being really helpful, especially, you know, when you're talking to other businesses or other communities that maybe are wondering how to move their planning into more execution. I would love for this committee to help advise on that. I think we've done an incredible job of moving a plan forward consistently. I think a lot of that is around the makeup of the committee and how who we involved in it. So I, I feel like we are always here in Greenfield, even though you know we're dealing with our own stuff, I'm not saying that, that we're perfect at everything, um, but I think everybody needs support in figuring out how to move into the action. And so I would just call on us and, and send folks our Thank way. Thank you, I appreciate that um, because you know all, all communities at this point are grappling with a lot of similar challenges, um, but everybody, you know, if we're thinking of the roadmap of um, where folks are in their challenges, like where everybody's at different spots. So I appreciate your willingness to help there because, um, you know, it, it's just kind of a, a new era right now. What do downtowns look like? What do main streets look like? Everybody's asking that same question. And I know in Greenfield, we like to pretend like we're the only, we're the only city with this, with this critical challenge. Um, but those are conversations that are happening across the Commonwealth. I've also looped our chamber in with um, uh, sim similar chambers and similar RTCs, obviously every state's a little different, that have a similar geographic footprint um, and constituent base and what that looks like to making sure that we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. um, and I appreciate the willingness to help on that because I think we need to make sure that as a region we're having those conversations cross county. Mm -hmm. Definitely. What about across, across state lines? Sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about Southern Brattleboro right. and just mm -hmm. so that, that, that's come up. So um, I don't. Does anyone here know Natty Hussey? So I yeah, just, I met him. So I just got to um, Natty and I are friends. He, um, but I wasn't. I didn't know the kind of work that he was doing. We we just got to judge the Take the Floor Pitch Conference uh, competition. Last week, we were both sharks. Um, sharks is a oh. term <laughs> doing because I could not have been like, more so. All of us were so supportive, and like, there's no sharks to be had. Um, very much guppies, but we um, there's a there's a couple of folks in southern Vermont because Vermont is an interesting place, especially since there's so many second residences in Vermont, and particularly when we talk about the the population challenges. We are looking outside of what's happening, but Southern Vermont is um, kicking it. Is kicking it, and they're open to collaboration. And I think we all know that, particularly in this area, we do have to have these conversations across state lines. So that's a very good point. Mm -hmm. Natty had until recently been on the planning board. Oh, really? Great. Great. Yeah. Carol, you have a question? Well, I wanted to say thank you. I. I forget exactly. Oh, well, one just minor point that might be major, but from my lens, I'm working on energy and sustainability, yeah. which is really also a big ticket yeah. item. And from, I just was at a climate resilience conference and all reports point to Western Mass becoming a receiver community and, mm -hmm. and having a huge infill of population. Mm -hmm. So that kind of surprised me to hear. Mm -hmm. And we'll see what happens, but you know, the weather patterns are changing. That's part of and, why I disagree that. Yeah. Yeah. And I like that report better. Like, <laughs> well, I kind of think it could be used as a marketing tool, and I think yeah. we should really be leaning in and yeah. being proactive and, at and providing I, the housing. I think you're right. And, and don't get me wrong, the population projections at this point I see as an opportunity for us to leverage different funding to the western side of the state. But I don't know that folks are going to want to come here if there's nothing to come to. Yeah. And so, the well, you know, <laughs> to get that moving. Yep, yep, yep. But we are leaders in terms of sustainability, mm -hmm. um, yep. and I 
I, I, I don't see us letting up on that front, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. I appreciate you saying that, and I was also sort of thinking about, you know, it, I'm not a marketer, I don't know anything about marketing, but I would imagine there's some way to, to sort of, you know, press the point that this is a lovely, oh, yeah. cool, you know, beautiful place to come to if you're living in a hot city that's getting hotter mm -hmm. every right. year kind well, of thing. Well, I think climate change. Yeah. Climate um, uh, relocation is certainly going to become. Oh, it's huge. Um, huge. There's a lot of different social challenges that I think are ultimately going to put us in a different position. Mm -hmm. um, you're right. But how do you, you know, most people, they want to come visit a, an area before they move there. And mm -hmm. so we, on the tourism mm -hmm. front, want to make sure that we're, we're doing our due diligence mm -hmm. um, and that they love it when they're here. And I, I don't think I made this point, but I just want to also remind everyone here that we have a number of incredible independent schools that are uh, filtering tourism into Franklin County every single year. So tourism brings in oh, $79 yeah. million dollars to Franklin mm -hmm. County each year. Um, and obviously, if we're doing our jobs right, we're going to build on that. Mm -hmm. um, but we want to make sure that people are here and that they love it. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if um, after, in, in response to Justice's question about how um, they can be of support. Mm -hmm. might, after people have had a chance maybe to check yeah. out some of these resources and if you could have a little item just to reflect on that and we could channel them. Um, and I'd love to come back once you check everything out. You know, we're really open to feedback, particularly on the website. It's, it, like you said, it's a soft launch because I don't, you know, there's still some, some things we're working on, but um, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And please sign up for the Chamber newsletter. It's really a great um, information grab how I plan my weekends. And events are very fun. It's, it's very fun. Um, you get to hear my thoughts once a month. <laughs> <laughs> um, and please, uh, please consider coming to the legislative breakfast on mm -hmm. June yeah. Are you going to do more lunches? <laughs> so, so Your breakfast are like 7 a.m., right? 7.30. 7 and let me yeah, tell thing. you, yeah, someone with three hours in, I'm, someone, I love those breakfasts. It's little kids. I'm up at 3.50, so it's not <laughs> early. That's a, that challenges me, but as someone with three children, I understand that right in the middle of drop off is not a great time for um, folks to meet. But um, I, one of the first questions I asked the network when I when I started last summer was like, "How do we feel about lunch? We're making yeah. them <laughs> late that kind of deal. Happy hour. We'll yeah, bring it back. Exactly. Yeah. I was like, we like breakfast. So oh. like, okay. <laughs> so I'm, I'm gonna ask the question again of this summer and see if we can't. You know, I I, I thought people loved the lunch. They did, but I did Everybody say did. at the April breakfast, I was like, "Hey, all you people that complain about this breakfast, show up to this lunch yeah. so we can make the point." But it's great. Um, you know. We're also limited in terms of um, venues that can hold a group of our size. We usually have between one or 200 folks, um, and that can do it during the day. We want to make sure we're not, uh, you know, Tarazas is great about opening for us for breakfast and same with GCC, but lunch, we want to make sure we're not disrupting their, their business. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Jesse. Thank great you. to have you here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good luck at the game. Thanks so much. <laughs> Um, so we're at 10 past. I know you had suggested we yeah. end early to be able to segue to. Sure. But in, yes. in, in, and next, one thing oh. really quickly before we move off it, um, because this was the point that really mm -hmm. stuck with me. One thing about the population um, declining report that I thought was particularly interesting um, that Jessica Atwood from FERCOG shared with me is that the data collection ended, and I'm going to forget what the first number is, the data collection ended when internet coverage of Franklin County was still incredibly low. It ended in, at like the end of 21 or something. And now we're 95% broadband covered as a county. Oh. And so Jessica was like, those projections <clears throat> have totally changed. Oh, right, right, right. Now you can come uh, live, work, whatever. And she felt like it immediately was no longer accurate. So huh. there are a lot of problems with that report. Also, also, Carol and I should mention that we had a really productive conversation with Jakinda Barahan from sure. anyway, she's from the Center for New Urbanism, Ooh. and they would love yeah, to help us. And for for they, like no cost or oh like God. very little. Yeah, pro, pro bono. Pro bono. So uh, we're still working. I on didn't it. even have to ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To help you do what? To, to, Say again? To help you do what? 
some kind of a presentation for the town mm. that would show, like, for example, here's a place that used to be a parking lot. It's got a temporary fire station. Could be used for housing. What have other municipalities done when they were faced with problems? Here's some examples of what can be done. Some beautiful examples. And across the board, it's all about, like, Jesse said, we don't have to invent the wheel, reinvent the wheel. There's so much great stuff out there. Everywhere I go, I see amazing projects. And it's more just kind of providing a basis for people to understand when things come up, what, what we're talking about, and sort of illustrating a lot of these tools that we have at our disposal that maybe people don't necessarily fully understand. So I, I think, and we didn't, we had to stop to come to the meeting, so we didn't get to debrief. But... About four to six months from now. Yeah, or she said they're bringing it up at, um, she's going to bring it up at their next board meeting at the beginning of June, and we'll get back in touch. And, and then we're going to start, like, conversing about, it, it's going to be very visual, and it's really something that should have been a part of the master plan process. I don't know if I want to call it a, I, I almost think of it as a visualization exercise, but it's going to have some education to it. I don't know if it's necessarily a charrette because that, that I think means more designing. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure of the terminology, but I see it being very, because I hear, I hear conversations happening and I think people have very different ideas of what they're talking about. So it's more bringing in this terminology that tends to live in the like urban planning world. Yeah. And I'll just close out. Carol had a brilliant idea. We have it in the new library. I have them all the time. <gasps> so we get to I love it. people to the new library. Right. Yeah. So I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna put this on the agenda for okay. the next time. This is awesome. Waiting for a proposal. Thank that, you. So. Wait. Thanks. Oh. Can I just add a quick, one of the things, because Phil had to leave to get here and I was already here, but um, we did talk about it possibly being like, you know, something that continues. So, you know, we, we definitely can't cover everything. And I don't know if you watched that uh, Urban Land Institute presentation, Nancy, but it, okay, it's 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 for practitioners. So yeah. I think the trick is making it for just everybody, and making it interesting and you know informative and stuff that stays with people. That's a a lot to accomplish. So I they need to be short, mm -hmm. but maybe we hit on them. So maybe that's the chamber can help sponsor the mm -hmm. cost we'll or something. Agenda for next meeting. Yep. I'm willing to move for adjournment. If anybody yeah. Oh. I just wanted to note that there have been a recommendation. You said you wanted to check if the committee wanted to do that to end a bit early. Mm -hmm. And you had had an item about consideration of the priorities. I did have something. So let me, I, yeah. I'm into adjourning, but I want to ask a quick mm -hmm. question because um, it struck me when we met last month and we talked about how long we had been in the process of sort of digging into our priorities again. Um, because I was like, it's been like three months. And Carol was like, it's been a year. <laughs> and and I, I am not sure where that process is going, but also felt like it was very helpful. Um, and I know that we haven't really had subcommittees, but people have also thrown out an interest in maybe continuing that work in a subcommittee format. And I just watched a webinar on open meeting law because I'm always the worst with it. And so I'm curious what ability there is for us to communicate by email in between meetings to maybe, no, right? Not really. Oh, maybe, what was your question? To, to figure out if maybe we form a subcommittee or some subcommittees to continue looking at our priorities and drilling down on them because I feel like we're, we always get stuck a little bit between we want to clarify our priorities, but also we know enough of our priorities that opportunities come up and we want to move. Did you do want to answer? I have an answer, but we know we're not supposed to. Really. Well, I, I know we've talked about this subcommittee thing before, so I, I don't really want to address that. I think George knows way more about it. Well, just that we we can have subcommittees. Yeah. Uh, over email, we can only do logistics, right. Right. like details, housekeeping is the right. 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 But um, no discussion. you can right. you can assign as a chair. You can designate yeah. a subcommittee. Um, and yeah, obviously you can recruit people who are interested in doing that. Okay. And, um, but the subcommittees, my understanding is, would also need to be posted and their agenda right. is going to yes. have to be open yeah. for people to attend. Okay. So, that's okay. okay. Oh. 
Um, I think we're all going to say the same thing, but go ahead. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, I, you know, um, I've been a fan of subcommittees in the past, and I think that in this particular case, that it's important for all of us to weigh in on the topic. Yeah. There's no yeah. way we're going to reach consensus with the yep. subcommittee. And I was yeah. going to say, as a new member, isn't that the work of this group more than anything yeah. else? Isn't that, shouldn't that be the focus of this group? Okay. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's nice to hear from a speaker, but then that, doesn't that distract from the work of the group? I wouldn't personally agree with that. Okay. No. Um, but only because I think one of our priorities, in my opinion, is to know what's going on and what's being accomplished. And, and the guest speakers have helped me to stay connected to some groups that are doing work that interacts with the master plan. But at the same time, I think that's the trouble is that we only have this one meeting a month and between trying to kind of take in information from other sources, which is helpful, look at our own sort of priorities list, catch up with um, even the knowledge that this group has when we get reports from DPW or from Carol. Um, we also, I keep calling them new members, but now to Carol's point from last time, Jonah, Greta, and Kim are not exactly new members. We've been here for a long time um, and have all offered to give presentations more on things. So I don't know, I just feel like we never have enough time. And I don't know what to do about that. You know, I, I was really sorry to miss the last one. I was excited for us to dig in. Perfect. Oh, you missed it. It was a great, it was the best. <laughs> yeah. so rub it in I wasn't there. Why not? I, 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 we can do it again. <laughs> well, I was, I mean, I'm sorry not to participate in it. But, yes. But, yes, um, yes. but it sounds like it was not a, by any means, a completion of the work. No, no. If we need to just do that a couple more times to, to yes. put it behind us, so to, fo to yes. focus yes. attention yes. and have it behind us. Excellent. We yeah, we need definitely keep going. Yeah, and you had I know we would be on announcements. You have something you want to say? Well, it is announcements. Actually. Yeah, yeah, I figured you're part of that. Yeah. Um, I looked at June 22nd, our next meeting. Uh, it hasn't been posted or put out there yet, but it's our second workshop for the Main Street reconstruction project at the John's on. It's not out there yet, but I won't be here because I will have to be there, but it might we be something be you folks want to attend. I know you Fine. attended the first one. Uh, I'd have to look at that, but it. it Five to seven, I think. Oh, so yeah. Is Santec putting that on? No, no. So it's yeah. and I missed. Oh, first one. It's been really uh, frustrating. And then before that, a week or two before that, the parking study is done, which Anna is aware of. There's going to be a, a public meeting on that. I don't know the date. Maybe. Thirteen. They wanted to do that public meeting before we went ahead with the second full workshop for the Main Street reconstruction. I did want to come to next me month's meeting because I wanted to give an update on the Main Street project and also mm -hmm. the dewatering project and a couple other things that are in motion right now that I'll have more. So of that's the 22nd? Meeting. Yes. Is there any chance yeah. that people could go with the 29th? One. Well, we can email all that back and forth, but I want to make sure everyone is aware. It is the 22nd because yeah. it's a month with five Thursdays. Okay. Yeah, so okay. that's one yeah. possibility we have sometimes on a, when there is a fifth Thursday. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. People wouldn't have something routinely scheduled. Could we take a very quick poll of availability for June 29th, which is the fifth Available. Thursday? Mm. Carol's a maybe. Uh -oh. Likely. Uh -oh. Jonah's a no. You're, you're yeah, not sure. Uh, I could maybe do that. <laughs> Probably. Greta's a maybe. Oh, thank you, Greta. Maybe, maybe. Do Jonah, you're a hard no? A hard no. I blocked these times off. I can always make the schedule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things important, but changing Weather is race. really hard yeah. to schedule yeah. everything yeah. around it. Okay. Um, Yeah, I'm going on the 29th. That is something you can do between meetings. The timing of oh, the main street six, meeting, yes. Marlo, what's the okay. time? Hang on just a sec, I'll find it. Um, 6 to 8 p.m. That's the, that's the on the 22nd. Zone. Yeah, it's not 5 to 7, it's 6 to 8. That's oh, so that's but I got to be there 5, 5.30ish myself. Mm -hmm. We could be right, there. Yeah, and send him off. We start at four thirty. Back it up a half hour, and you can still. I don't know how that works for you, but on um, twenty second. Yeah, maybe they both yeah. can work. So yeah, oh, I, can, I can do it. Twenty second. Start four thirty. Everybody, quick show of hands. Starting at four thirty, possible? Why not? I can't make not. the twenty second. You can't but make the twenty second. No, it's our kickoff and the last day of school situation. You can't make it at all. Oh, no, okay, our kickoff so, is four to six, and we'll be setting up before then. 
Got it. So we'd be without Marlo and Greta. Um, well, if we back it up, um, I I can be here. For Ooh, well, yeah, a good portion of it. It's four doable. And, it's, doable. and it's not going to, unfortunately, it's not, no matter what we do, we'll it's not going to check that the room's right. full, but we I had that game. Oh, we were. Right. I'll right. survive yeah. if I miss June. What was that? We all miss you. <laughs> <laughs> I said I'll survive. <laughs> it's four o'clock doable for people? Four o'clock on the 22nd. Mm -hmm. And it said we were going to be in the library, just to mention that. Oh. Right? Can you put that somewhere? Um, we will be. No, we, well, we can't we're be. Gonna be in the the library is not opening until. No, I, oh. I, yeah, the library will not be open okay. until July. I thought it would be. Um, and we were planning to be at John's on, but it sounds like maybe there will be something setting uh, up there that we might not be able yeah, to Yeah, we'll there. be so I'll I'll starting at 5 p.m. there for the workshop. I'll have to circle back with Christian then. We could do a Zoom, then, then. Um, have a Zoom meeting. We could. I just love the in person. Right. Well, it might be possible if this would be free if we're earlier, if we started forward. That is true. That is true. Do we have um, to be in a municipal setting or can we be outside? Not necessarily, but. I'm just uh, thinking of the co ops, whatever that main street space I, is. I have, I have to take a bio break. Okay. Yes, Sorry. yes. I will I will follow up with Christian and find out the rules and the and the everything for where, where we'll be. Um, Let me know and I will send know. out something. We are <laughs> going to move to four o'clock on okay. the twenty second. We're going to go from one job to the next. <laughs> and then <laughs> meeting. No. All right. I will send. Thank you. I didn't mean to mess up the quirks, but that's a, an important Did we thing. To turn no, 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 no. It's, I'll make a motion. No, no, no. It's not going to be the no. minutes. This meeting is gone. Yeah, right. Oh, that's great. We're going to I have no <laughs> idea how, what it took to schedule that with all the parties. All in favor of adjournments. Aye. 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 All right. Oh, oh, thank oh. you, Molly. Thank you.